Are we witnessing the beginning of something much darker for Diddy? Recently, he's been placed on suicide watch, sparking a wave of questions. What really led to this situation? Is this the breaking point that no one anticipated? Or is there more happening behind the scenes that we're unaware of? Many people were quick to point out that being placed on suicide watch is standard procedure and doesn't necessarily reflect Diddy's actual mental state. Whether he's truly suicidal remains uncertain. Celebrities often receive special treatment when they enter the prison system, and Diddy is no exception. Initially, it seemed like he was just following the usual protocol, but with only a week gone by, it's becoming clear that something more may be unfolding. The food is terrible, of course the inmates are terrible, the guards are terrible, it's, the conditions are terrible. It's just terrible. The inmates that you're surrounded around, just in general, uh, a lot of them are brought up on pretty heavy federal indictments, right? So just in terms of the atmosphere there, it's just certainly one that no one wants to be in. The pressure is mounting on Diddy. While he's locked up behind bars, people on the outside continue to suffer from the impact of his alleged actions. One such person is Talia Graves. It's hard to believe, but another lawsuit has emerged. The internal pain after being sexually assaulted has been hard to put into words. This time from Talia, who claims that Diddy and his bodyguard, Joseph Sherman, drugged and assaulted her. In her disturbing account, Talia alleges that not only did the men assault her, but they also recorded the attack and shared the footage with others. She recalls the traumatic incident from 2001, when she was just 25. According to her, Diddy and his bodyguard offered her a glass of wine. Shortly after drinking it, she felt dizzy and weak, eventually losing consciousness. When she woke up, her hands were tied, and she was assaulted by both men. Her story adds to the growing list of allegations against Diddy, all of which he has continuously denied. Diddy's legal team has brushed off these claims as attempts to extort money and have called them sickening fabrications. But Diddy's legal troubles go beyond civil lawsuits, he's also facing criminal charges. Currently held at the Metropolitan Detention Center, MDC, in Brooklyn, he shares a cell block with another disgraced figure, former cryptocurrency mogul Sam Bankman-Fried. His latest arrest stems from charges involving racketeering, trafficking, and transporting women for prostitution. Prosecutors have depicted a disturbing picture of Diddy's lifestyle, alleging that he manipulated and coerced women to perform for him, all while covering his tracks to maintain his public image. Although Diddy has yet to face a criminal conviction, that could soon change. Sources report that federal investigators are preparing to have his accusers testify before a grand jury, a crucial step that could advance his criminal case. It seems like it's only a matter of time before the law catches up with him. As you may already know, these are not the only allegations surrounding Diddy. In recent months, more accusers have stepped forward, exposing some of his darkest secrets. One of them, April Lambros, filed a lawsuit claiming that between 1995 and 2001, she was assaulted by Diddy on three separate occasions and forced to take drugs during terrifying encounters. Former model Crystal McKinney also accused Diddy of drugging and assaulting her at his New York recording studio in 2003. Another woman, Joey Dickerson, claims that Diddy drugged and assaulted her in 1991 while she was a college student, secretly filming the entire ordeal. The accusations continue to mount. There is even a lawsuit from former bad boy producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who alleges that Diddy pressured him into sexual situations involving prostitutes while also organizing parties with underage girls and illegal drugs. According to Lil Rod, these parties weren't just for Diddy's own enjoyment, they also involved record executives and even celebrities. One lawsuit even mentioned Prince Harry, though there's no proof that the royal was ever present. His legal team quickly dismissed the claims as reckless name-dropping, firmly denying any involvement. But the controversies extend beyond just lawsuits. In 2016, a shocking video surfaced showing Diddy with his ex-girlfriend, Cassie, in a hotel hallway, adding further fuel to the scandals surrounding him. In the video, Diddy is seen grabbing, dragging, and kicking Cassie. Earlier this year, he issued a public apology, calling his behavior disgusting and attributing it to one of the darkest periods of his life, while he expressed deep regret. Cassie's legal team was unconvinced, accusing him of making the apology more about his own struggles than acknowledging the harm he inflicted on her. It's important to note that in November 2023,
Cassie also filed a lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of repeated physical abuse and forcing her to participate in his notorious freak-offs parties, where he allegedly recorded the acts. Even former employees have spoken out. Diddy's ex-personal chef, Cindy Rueda, sued him in 2017 for harassment, claiming she was made to serve food while Diddy and his guests engaged in sexual activities, or immediately afterward, though the lawsuit was settled. The shadow of Diddy's dark past lingers. Diddy's legal troubles trace back to the early 1990s, around the time he founded Bad Boy Records, a hip-hop label that reshaped the music industry by signing icons like the notorious B.I.G. and Janelle Monae. Diddy went on to build a vast empire that spanned music, fashion, and liquor. He sold a 50% stake in Bad Boy to Warner Music Group for $30 million in 2005, and earlier this year, he made headlines by selling his share of the De Leon tequila brand for $200 million. In 2022, Forbes ranked him as one of the highest paid entertainers, with earnings of $90 million. But now, none of his wealth or high-profile business deals seem to matter. Diddy's extravagant lifestyle, from multi-million dollar homes to billion dollar ventures, is now eclipsed by the flood of shocking accusations. One of his homes in Holmby Hills was raided earlier this year as part of an ongoing criminal investigation, and with a new docuseries produced by 50 Cent set to debut on Netflix. The public will witness Diddy's fall from grace unfold in real time. 50 Cent launched the docuseries in December, but now he's saying more victims are stepping forward, which may call for additional episodes. The proceeds from the series are reportedly going to the victims, bringing Diddy's alleged crimes into full public view. Speaking of being watched, guess who's under 24-7 observation right now? That's right, Diddy. And the reason? Well, it seems the staff at the MDC aren't too sure Diddy can hold it together for much longer. He's been placed on suicide watch while locked up in Brooklyn. As we've mentioned before, being on suicide watch for someone like Diddy isn't necessarily about showing signs of suicidal behavior, it's often a precaution. That said, it's pretty clear he's likely struggling right now. Sources say Diddy is in shock. And considering what he's up against, it's no surprise. His lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, recently spent time with him and stated that Diddy is not suicidal at all. Naturally, Diddy's lawyer isn't going to criticize his client publicly. However, if you read his body language during the interview, it tells a different story, he's clearly not being honest. And the fact that he brushed off Diddy having 1,000 bottles of baby oil? That's just bizarre. Now let's talk about Diddy's mental state. If you listen to someone who truly knows him, like his former bodyguard Gene Deal, who's been by his side through thick and thin, it's clear Diddy is in serious trouble. Gene Deal has made it clear, trouble is headed Diddy's way. Gene. Deal. Now. Gene did take it quite far, saying what he said. Folks still think that this is just standard procedure. Suicide watch is standard for high-profile celebrity prisoners. It does not indicate he is suicidal. However, there seems to be more to it than what meets the eye. Why? Well, it seems that people are lining up ready to switch sides on Diddy. Eventually, you can only keep people quiet for so long. Once the money and power are gone, everything comes crashing down. People are turning on Diddy, yes. You heard right. Folks are getting ready to cooperate with federal authorities. And you know what that means? They'll be taking the stand and airing out all of Diddy's dirty secrets. While no one knows exactly who all is involved since the case is still ongoing, you can bet that Hollywood and hip-hop stars will be part of it. At the very least, Kid Cudi and Cassie are expected to testify once the feds come knocking. Many others have been affected by Diddy's actions as well. One example is Jonathan Audie, with Diddy now on suicide watch. A video of Audie resurfaced, in which he claims he was Diddy's slave. Audie is the same guy who went on a rampage inside Trump's Doral Resort. But let's set that aside for now and get back to his claims. He says he was involved with both Diddy and his ex, Cassie, and is now calling himself their slave. According to Audie, Diddy would tell him what to do to Cassie while Diddy watched. But that's not even the most shocking part. Audie also claims the hip-hop industry is hiding a secret network smuggling drugs, like liquid cocaine, on private jets. He insists he was deeply involved with Diddy and Cassie in this operation. He even made the wild accusation that he contracted herpes from all of it. At first, nobody believed him. 
and the police brushed off his claims when he brought them up in 2018. However, with the new wave of allegations against Diddy, people are starting to piece things together. In November 2023, Cassie filed a lawsuit accusing Diddy of forcing her into these freak-offs, parties with male prostitutes that he allegedly filmed, and now, federal investigators are making similar claims in their case against him. This adds another layer of trouble for him. Rivers points out how reckless Diddy's actions appear for someone of his stature, especially now that he's facing the possibility of life in prison. Currently, Diddy is on suicide watch, denied bail, and his lawyer is attempting to convince the court of his innocence, claiming he is ready to clear his name. However, Rivers is skeptical, highlighting that the evidence, including video recordings, tells a different story. Diddy is in serious trouble, and no amount of money or high-powered legal defense can alter the grim reality he's confronting. Ultimately, he's living a nightmare of his own creation, and it's about to get much darker as the case progresses. People are wondering what's next for Diddy and how this will affect his career. This could be a pivotal moment for him. We'll have to wait and see how things unfold moving forward.